Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All right, all our moms, stand up. Right, we're so glad that you're here today. We want to honor you. Hallelujah. Without you, none of us would be here. Hallelujah. So what we're going to ask you to do is all the moms, please come down and form a line across the front of the church. Even if you're visiting with us, you're welcome to come. Hallelujah. Now, do we have any moms here that are over 60? There's one coming. <laughs> Let the cat out of the bag. Uh, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> if you knew how much trouble you're in now. Just <laughs> barely over 60. I said, how many moms are over 60? And he said, there's one coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, uh, so that's our, so you're our oldest mom. We're not going to ask you exactly how. Any moms under 30, raise your hand. Any moms under 25, raise your hand. You're our youngest mom. All right. Hallelujah. So we got from, from under 25 to over 60, and that's as far as we're going with that. <laughs> or we could all get in trouble and just mess up the whole church service. So my wife wants to give you a, 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 a flower, not a rose, a, a carnation, and just say thank you for being a great mom. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And you're just such a blessing. And we thank you for what you do to, to bring your children up in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't know how important your job is uh, to raise children and to guide the house and to be a blessing. Well, I want you to know yeah. that being a mother, hallelujah, is an important job. We thank God for your work in the kingdom. Is that good enough? <laughs> I need a Hammond B3 with a Leslie. Hallelujah. And somebody knows how to play it. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I think our youngest mom and our oldest mom deserve an extra flower. I mean, the fifth chapter of the book of 1 John Hallelujah. We, we're glad you're here today. Hallelujah. You know, God is a good God. God's a merciful God. Amen. And uh, we're, we're glad God's merciful. I'm sure glad we don't get penalized for, I mean, boy, can you imagine if every time you did something wrong, you got hit in the head with a baseball bat? Man, I, they would call, be calling me knothead. Hallelujah. God is merciful, and God is gracious to us. Hallelujah. And um, as long as we pursue him and keep our hearts right um, he, and keep working towards walking with him, he, he'll walk with us. Hallelujah. Look in your first John, the fifth chapter. We'll just go ahead and pick up in verse 1. It says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. Now, believe it. Now, we understand this. We're not talking about, yeah, my grandmama said it, so it's so. We're talking about, you know, believing in action or in line with the confession of his lordship. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. You can't say that you love God or believe in God, don't believe in Jesus and love Jesus. And John's making that very clear, that if you, if, you, if you say that you love God, but you don't believe in Jesus, then you're not born of God. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And we could go into a whole lot of things there, but just let me say this. If God says don't, don't. It's that simple. You know, you tell your kids, don't touch the hot stove. That is not a grievous commandment. It's a commandment that will keep you from getting burned. Amen. Amen. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. So we're talking about this morning overcoming or, you know, this lifestyle 
that brings an overcoming to your life. In other words, you overcome because you have a lifestyle of faith. The lifestyle of faith. And we're going to get into some points about having the lifestyle of faith, how we get to the lifestyle of faith, what it means, and, and things we can do to make sure we're in that lifestyle of faith and not forcing or undermining the lifestyle of faith. Because we want to live by faith. Everybody say, I want to live by faith. See, if you're born of God, then you're, you know, the just shall live by faith. Okay? Uh, we have that in, in at least four passages in the scripture about the just shall live by faith. And if we're to live by faith, and then Hebrews 11 tells us that without faith it's impossible to please him, then, then that's a very important matter in our life. We got, we've gotten some new mantras in the, in the body of Christ that are inaccurate. You know, that if we're just as long as, we live, as, long as we're under grace, it doesn't matter. It, but see, you still have to live by faith. We're under grace. Glory to God. Because without his grace, I couldn't live by faith. But because I'm under his grace doesn't mean I, I'm going to live by faith. Without it, I can't. But just because I'm under it doesn't mean I will. Okay? So there's things that we have to do. All right. So let's, let's look at issues in our life. When we've got problems going on, there's some things we've got to do. Number one, we've got to recognize the source. You've got to know who your enemy is. One of the greatest strategic um, manipulations in warfare is to deceive people about who the real enemy is. Now, I, I have some friends, uh, uh, Hannes and uh, Iri Mekula, or Mekula. They're from Estonia. They're, they're native Estonian. They're, they're ethnically Estonian. But they grew up under the Soviet, uh, the Soviet Union's uh, rule. Now, I've been in Tallinn numerous times in the city of Tallinn, Estonia. Uh, and, and been into the old town and, and been there to where the big tower was. He said, we, and go, we went down the street. He says, we used to stand in the street. And on top of this big, now this tower was probably built in 800. And these are old, old walled city. I mean, it's a, if you've never been, if you want to see an old medieval preserved city that's, that's over, like over a thousand years old, go to Tallinn. The cobblestones are still there. I mean, the, the, the turrets for the, tower, for the war towers are still there. It's a really cool place. But one of them stood, at, stood up on, on the hill, and he said, as a kid, I used to run out here in the street, and every time I looked up that hill, the Soviet red flag with a hammer and sickle was flying on it. And we used to, as kids, climb up the wall. We weren't supposed to, but the soldiers wouldn't do anything because we were kids and that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, he says, but I remember. Now, now they escaped from, from Estonia while it was still under Soviet rule, uh, made their way through Sweden, and actually ended up coming into Seattle, Washington with $15 in the pocket and came to America as, um, as you know, uh, uh, refugees. Yeah, thank you. Refugees from, from the Soviet. I couldn't even think of the word. I was trying to think of the right word. And uh, ended, up, ended up going to Ramah. The day they graduated from Ramah, by then the Iron Curtain had fallen. They got on a plane and flew back to Estonia. He said he ran down the street, ran out to that one place, and stood at the bottom of that hill where he had, every, every day his whole life that he looked up there, there was a Soviet flag flying. And for the first time in his life, he saw the Estonian flag flying over top of that. Oh, man, what, what a, you know, you know. And, uh, but he, all I have to say this, he said that when they were in, as kids, they would watch films in schools. And they would show the American grocery stores. All the vegetables and all the produce, filling the shelves and filling the produce things. And say, see, in America, they don't have enough money to even buy their food. And then show them their grocery stores with nothing on them. See, we have enough money, we buy all of our food. And the, tr and the truth of the matter was, there wasn't enough food to supply the grocery stores with there. We have so much of abundance, even if it goes bad, they just throw it out. Because people are still buying it. We buy it, even when it goes bad, they just throw it out and put more in. See, they, they lie about who the enemy is. The, that, that is a, a strategic method of deception to get people to, to think that the, what, who the enemy really is. And Satan uses it in your life. Hello? We got, we got, we got people believe that God's the one that put stuff on them, that God's the one that made them sick, God's the one that put this and, and is trying to teach them something, and, and Satan's confusing people, and they're fighting the wrong enemy. You got to know who the source of your problems are. Of what's coming against you, ultimately the source of it. Now, you may not have a demon in your house, but, you know, <clears throat> Satan is the author of sickness and disease. Satan is the author of poverty. Satan is the author of calamity. Satan is the author of destruction. Now, you, you could do things to help it work, but you still got to know who the source of it is. And, and stop blaming God. You can't blame God and get out of it. 
I said this the other week when we were talking talk about healing. People say, you know, the Lord put this on me to teach me a lesson and run right. They get out of the doctor's office and run straight. I mean, they, they, they believe that. They, get, they you know, go testify in church. The Lord's trying to teach me something by giving me this cancer. And they get up and run right to the doctor to try to get rid of what the Lord gave them. The Lord didn't give it to them. That's what they're saying. And they'll go take all the medicine they can to get rid of what the Lord gave them. Now, either God did or God didn't. And if God did, you better ask for a double portion. Because if God did it, there's a reason that's going to be good for you. See, I don't believe God did give it to you. You know, I don't believe the Bible teaches that God gave it to you. Right, but see, you've got to know who your enemy is because you cannot stand in faith. You cannot stand in faith to get rid of something if you believe God's putting it on you. Because then you're working against God. So let's recognize our source. Let's go to John 10.10, 10, the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Hallelujah. That is right after John chapter 9. At least it is in my Bible. <clears throat> Verse 7, Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man shall enter in, he shall be saved. Now, Jesus is making it very clear. There's no other way in through him but through him. You got people who come along and say, well, you know, Jesus is one of many ways. No, Jesus said, I'm one of the only way. Oh, Jesus was a good man. No, he's not. If Jesus is one of many and is simply a good man, then he's the biggest liar that ever walked the face of the planet, and he cannot be a good man. You cannot have it both ways with Jesus. It is either or. There's no middle ground. You cannot reconcile Jesus into a class of good prophets from the past because he made it clear, I am the door. Anybody else is a thief and a robber. Well, that, that settles it. So you got, you got, you want his, oh, coming to Jesus, it's fish or cut bait. Come on now. You either fish or cut bait because you can't have it both ways. You can't have him as a good guy and him Muhammad as a good guy, you know, and Krishna as a good guy and the two million gods of the Hinduism religion as good guys. You can't have all good animals, whatever they are at the time, because you don't know what they came back as last time. Hello, their karma's floating around. I mean, even, you, you go study Hinduism and you find out that their, that their belief system is, 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 is messed up. Because they believe that nothing stays the same, but yet everybody gets to carry their karma with them, although it dissipates. And you can't, you know, they, they, they're trying to have it both the four ways. All right? It doesn't work. Jesus said, I am the door. Amen? If any man enters in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Glory to God. That's a good promise, isn't it? If we're going to go in and out with him, we're going to find good pasture, praise God. Now, folks, it's time for you, start, some of y'all start finding some good pasture. Well, how do I do that? Go in and out with Jesus. Amen. The thief cometh not, but for two. Now, that's old King Jimmy for the only reason the thief comes is. <laughs> okay? You know, kind of gets, you know, sometimes you get the King James and it's so poetic, uh, you kind of go, okay, I got it on the third time through, I got it. The thief cometh, and the only, there's only one, there's only, these are the only purposes, I was going to say only one reason. The thief comes for these purposes. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Stop right there. Jesus assigned the destruction, the death, and the killing to Satan. He's telling you that if it kills, if it destroys, if it steals, the source of it is the thief. Everybody say it's the thief. Everybody say it's the thief. It's not God. It's a thief. You got to know the source. And if you don't know the source, you can't stop it. Amen. Now, I've done a lot of construction and <clears throat> electric and plumbing work, you know, over the years. I've done a lot of stuff. I, I mean, actually, I had a, a professional plumber when I was working at Parker's down in Greenville. He taught me how to sweat pipe. I can do copper. You know, not everybody, you know, a lot of people can just do PVC. I can do copper. I can sweat copper, you know. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a skill that not many people use anymore because they don't use much copper. It's so expensive. And they're using polybutane, you know, and they little crimp tools and all that kind of stuff, which goes great and fast, but I, I can sweat copper. Now, if you get a leak somewhere and you don't find the source of the leak, you can't fix it. Well, we're, 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 we're leaking in here somewhere. I think it might. You can't think. You've got to know. You don't open up a wall and go, oh, I think it might be right here and fix that. And close it all back up, because if that won't it, you're going to have the leak again. You've got to go find the source. You've got to find out what it is. 
And Jesus is telling us that the source of destruction, of killing, of, of, um, of stealing is the devil. You've got to know that. Everybody say, I've got to know that. Why? Because once you know that, then you can deal with it. <clears throat> you ever taken your car in to get fixed? They go, well, I think it might be this. They hang a part on there and cost you $400, and then you drive off the lot, and you're still doing the same thing. I don't want you to hang parts. I want you to find out what the problem is so you can deal with the source. Because if, if you keep going at this rate, I have a whole new engine to fix the real problem. All right. So Jesus says that if it steals, if it kills, if it destroys, it's the enemy. So our, the source of, of these things is Satan. It is not God. And we need to deal with it accordingly. Amen. And then he goes on in, in, in the same verse and says, I am come. Now this is <clears throat> structure. There's an understood but here. It's not there. It's not written, but it's understood. The thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. I am come. You have a, a, a thesis and an antithesis. You have... You know, you, you lay out that Satan is the source of these things, and then the antithesis is, I'm the source of this. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly or have it to the full. You know, uh, glory to God. So we, we always tell people, when I teach this verse, I always say this, and because somebody may not have heard it before, so if you've heard it before, why don't you start practicing it? Maybe I'll stop telling it. <laughs> Take a piece of paper, draw four columns, write steal, kill, destroy life, Take anything that's going on in your life and categorize it under one of those columns. And when you get done, over still, kill, destroy, put Satan. Over life, put God. Now you know where it's coming from. If it still kills and destroys, it's coming from the devil. If, it comes, if it's life, it's coming from God. Now you know your source. Look over in 1 Peter chapter 5. Because we've got another source. <clears throat> source. 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 Nathan, I need your little box up here so I can lower my register of my voice, get a little deeper. 1 John 5 would be great, but it's not where we're going. 1 Peter 5. Verse, 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 verse. Here we go. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your... Come on, church. Because your adversary, the devil. Who's our adversary? God is not your adversary. God's on your side. God's for you. He's not against you. He's here to help you. He's here to deliver you. He's here to heal you. He's here to bring you out. He's not against you. Say, God's not against me. As a matter of fact, the scripture says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Come on now. If God be for us, who can be against us? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. See, he's always wanting to be like Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, he's not a Rastafarian. He don't smoke dope and get high to kind of get closer to his father. He goes about, Satan goes about as a royal lion because the Bible calls Jesus the lion of the tribe of Judah. But Satan can only come as a, as, as, as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. But this, what we're here after really in this verse more than anything, well, verse 9, may as well go ahead and read verse 9. Whom resist? steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the, that are in the world. Think about that now. <clears throat> God says that anything you're going through, the same things other people go through. You're not some special number. You're not getting some kind of deal that nobody else ever, 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 ever got. But you're given an instruction. Thank God God gave us instruction. Aren't you glad God didn't just say, Satan goes about as a roaring lion, look at whom he may devour. God gave you instruction, whom resist steadfast in the faith, glory to God. God wants you to resist the devil. God wants you to resist what he brings. God wants you to resist anything he's got his hands on. Resist, whom resist steadfast, what? In the faith. Now that should be, I, I'm, I'm, sometimes I wonder why we don't have six people running, because that's good stuff. 
Amen. So we need to recognize the source of the problem, but you know what? We also need to recognize the, who the source of the answer is. Look over in 2 Corinthians 2. We hadn't got there yet on our Wednesday night study. Paul is still stuck in Ephesus. He's been there for two and a half months. Because I'm telling you, 1 Corinthians has taken a long time to get there. We're down in chapter, we're in the chapter 14. There's only two more chapters and, we're, and Paul can move on. Aren't y'all glad Paul gets to move on after, after two more chapters? Hallelujah. Then we'll get into 2 Corinthians, the third longest book of the New Testament, or, or of, of Paul's writings. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now see, Satan's the source of the problem. Here's the source of your victory. Now thanks be unto God, which always, come on church, always causes us to do what? To sing the he all song, gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Is that what he said? No. No, he said he always causes us to triumph. When, we, when I hear the word triumph, I don't hear barely made it through. I don't hear sneaking in by the skin of your teeth. I don't hear, oh, God, we made it in somehow, some way. You know, I hear victory. I hear the march of victory. I see the armies of victory. You know, in Paris, uh, and, and, the, and they have the Arc de Triomphe. Uh, they, and and in, uh, down in Barcelona, they have their own Arc de Triomphe. Uh, it's, it's in Spanish. I don't know exactly how you say it in Spanish. But, you know, on, on the Champs Elysees, they're in Paris, at the, down from the Louvre Museum, which was the palace, the, the, the museum, I mean, not the museum, but the, but the castle. Uh, but right down there is the, is the Arc de Triomphe. And the armies, Napoleon armies would march through that. Because it was a sign of victory. It was a triumphant march. When Hitler, when, 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 when the French capitulated and the Germans took over, Hitler drove through that arch as a sign of his victory and triumph. All right? Well, our arc de triomphe is Jesus. And we march through him, hallelujah, as a victorious church. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God's not coming back for the weenie fire church. He's coming back for the triumphant church. Hallelujah. Are you here? Uh, come on now. We got this idea, you know, if we can just hang on until Jesus gets back. No! We're going to be a triumphant, glorious church. Hallelujah. When Jesus shows up, he's coming back, and we're marching out in victory. Amen. Not in defeat. Now, thanks be unto God, which always calls us to triumph through Jesus Christ, I mean, in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. We're all getting uptight. I'm telling you something. Let me, let me say this. There's a lot of stuff going on. The court systems in America, the persecution of the church. I mean, you know, you know uh, tolerance in America means you can't be a Christian. That's what it means. But let me say something. Don't get uptight. Yeah. I said don't get uptight. Because when the Romans began to persecute the church, they scattered them abroad. And all it did is set a fire on them, and the church grew, and the church grew, and the church grew all over the world. And I'm telling you, the more they press this against us, it's kind of like a, a Star Wars. When, when Princess Leia is talking to uh, uh, whoever, uh, the, Peter Cushing, whatever role he was, you know, talk. The more you tighten your grip, talk the more they're going to slip through your fingers. And the more the devil persecutes the church, the more we're going to spread out. And the more we're going to preach Jesus. And we're going to get out of our comfort zone of our Nintendo games and our it's all about me. And we're going to get after people. And we're going to make our manifest the savor of his victory everywhere we go. Glory to God. Don't get uptight. Get excited. Hallelujah. It is a time for the church to shine. It is a time for the church to rise up. It is time for the church to get out and say, we will not be, we will not be defeated. We will not quit. We're going forth with the power of God, hallelujah, we're going forth in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and they can persecute us, and they can come against us, but Lord, behold their threatenings, hallelujah, and now stretch forth your hand to heal by the name of your holy child, Jesus, glory to God, and we will triumph, and we will be victorious, and we will manifest his glory in the earth, come on church, hallelujah, Jesus is the source of our victory, amen, three of you said amen. 2 Peter chapter 2, I'm mean, sorry, Psalm 46, 1. 
Don't be, don't, just don't get up tight. Stop worrying about it. Because the darker the darkness gets, the brighter the light shines. Satan doesn't understand that the more he tries to put out the light, the brighter it is even when it's wimpy light. You can take a big lighter and light up like they turn off all the light in this room. We've got a lot of light in this room right now. But you can put all the light out, make it completely dark, and light a big lighter. And because of the darkness, that light will shine. And if you light a lighter right here right now, it won't put out enough light to even overcome anything. But in this room, if you turn out all the light and turn on, light a lighter, there will be enough light to navigate this room. It will shine brighter than anything in here. So Satan's whole plan of bringing darkness is counterproductive. Because no matter how bright the light, as long as this light will shine, even in the midst of the great of, of gross darkness. Amen. That went over big. That's still true. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge, a very present help in trouble. We used to sing this chorus. God is my refuge and God is my strength, a very present help in trouble. God is my refuge and God is my strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, I will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. And we should sing that. Are y'all clapping? Nathan. You're on the road with Dick, aren't you? That's not good. <laughs> they're going to come up with a, uh, a Christian Woodstock. Get all the songs saved. Huh? It's going to be awesome. The first song they're going to do, if you're going to church on Sunday, make sure... I said, you and Dick don't need to get together anymore. <laughs> well, you know, in case of the rapture, you want to, you know, anyway. <laughs> so sometime in the next year, we're going to have a Christian Woodstock. Hallelujah. We'll let you dress up like hippies. Some of you still do. Anyway, you can't wait to see me in my bell bottoms and two-tone platform shoes, can you? I had, now listen, I just didn't have bell bobs. I had elephant legs. Remember elephant legs? They started here and went out. Yep. Had two-tone platform shoes. Ah, ah. Anyway. God is our refuge. Notice that Satan steals, kills, and destroys. He's our adversary. But God is our refuge. He's what? A very present help when and when we're in trouble man you can have faith in this that when the enemy shows up when the enemy comes in like a flood hallelujah the Lord shall raise up a standard against him glory to God our God moves in on the scene praise God and causes us to triumph know who your source of victory is it's not your banker Listen, let me say something. Don't, don't take this wrong. It's not your banker. It's not your doctor. It's not this. They're in the earth, but your source. God may use them, but they're not your source. He is your source. He is your answer. Can somebody say amen real loud? Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41.10. Somebody say, God is good. Say, God is my refuge. God is my fortress. He is a very present help in trouble. Yeah, I'm glad he's present. He's not on vacation. Amen. Psalm 41. Church, for church we got to start saying what the word says. We should sing this too. Fear not. Stop. Don't just, there's a reason not to fear. See, a lot of times I'm, I'm not going to be afraid. Why? 
It's not good enough just to go, I'm not going to be afraid. Why are you not going to be afraid? What is the reason that you have the faith not to be afraid? Well, it's right here in this verse. Fear not, why? For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am what? Thy God. Not only that, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee. Glory to God. Just lost part of my Bible. We'll put it back in later. Hallelujah. Man, that's enough to make you dance. Hallelujah. Just stun me. Thinking. Woo, glory to God. God tells me not to be afraid. And there's a reason I don't have to be afraid. He's with me. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So I remember John Nuzo's story. John Nuzo pastor, pastors up in the Crownberry Township. And uh, John was here telling us, you know, he told a story here at the church a number of years ago. And he said his uncle or his, his grandfather, one of his relatives, had gotten saved. But he was in, you know, he, was work, he had worked with the mob. He was Italian, Nuzo, Italian. You know, working with the mob is not unusual. You know what I'm saying? And um, they had, they, you know, he said, I, I'm, I'm out, I'm done, I'm, with, I'm done with you guys. And they said, no, you can't do that. He said, well, I'm done. And so they sent out people to take him out. And so a guy was hiding in the bushes one night because he, he, he walked this same path home from wherever he worked every day. He says, walking down the street, and the guy's in the bushes with his gun. And as soon as, his, 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 as John's relative got there, his, they were going to kill him. Except he walked right by him, and the guy didn't do a thing. So the guy saw him a little bit later out in the daylight somewhere. He said, who's that guy you got with you? He said, what guy? He said, you got some guys like seven foot tall. He's your bodyguard. He said, no, I don't. He said, man, I was out there. I was sent to kill you the other night. He said, we were, you were coming down the street, and when you stepped off the curb about a block from where I was, he said, your guard, guard put his hand in his pocket and looked at me and walked all the way down the street with you. And when we walked by the bush, he just looked at me the whole time. He said, there was nobody with me. You see, God is our refuge. God is our, our fortress, a very present help in trouble. Amen. He said, I am with you. He sent his angel. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. A number of years ago, there was a guy down on one of the islands. The Muslims were going to come kill him. And, when they, and, they, they were, and, they were, and they were, their house was out near the seashore, so they were going to come in from the sea and go up and, kill, and murder them in their bed. And they saw him later because they, they didn't do it. They said, where did you get those bodyguards from? They said, what bodyguards? We said, we came to kill you the other night, and your whole, the whole outside perimeter of your home was lined with all these men with automatic weapons, and they were standing guard. Fear not, for I'm with thee. My friend Fawaz, remember Fawaz came and visited a while back. He, the Jordanians told him, when they fought the six-day war against Israel, when they came in to take Israel out, they said they came up on the sand dunes, and there were millions of soldiers. Israel didn't have millions of soldiers. Wiped them out. Took them. I mean, just took. I mean, just flat out took them out in no time. God said, "Fear not, I am God. I fear not, I am with thee. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be. You don't have to be concerned. You don't have to fear." When you know your God, hallelujah. I said, when you know your God is the God of heaven and earth, hallelujah. He knows how to sustain you. He knows how to protect you. He knows how to bring you victory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am your God. Hallelujah. Paul got so excited one time, he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? God be for us! Who can be against us? I'm your God. He only goes on and says, I'll strengthen you. I love this. I'll uphold you. The source of your victory comes from God Almighty. The source of your victory comes from the greater one. The Apostle John got to talking about the Holy Ghost, and he just got so excited. He said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 
We have movies like The Exorcist and The Omen and all that kind of stuff. We get paranormal activity and we all get afraid of the devil. If Lester Summerall saw paranormal activity, he'd tell them to get out of his woods. <laughs> Amen. Are you here? And if they mess with his bed, he'd tell them to put it back when they found it. I said the other day, Wigglesworth came up one night, woke up in the middle of the night, went down the hallway, his chair, rocking chair was rocking, and the devil was sitting in it. He looked at him and said, oh, it's you, and went back to bed. Now, I know a lot of y'all, you would have gotten the holy water. You would have gotten some holy oil. You would have bathed the house and sprayed it all over the place and screamed, the, you know, and be like brown, you know. The devil's a lie. The devil's a lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just we got to understand that the greater one indwells us. I said the greater one indwells us. Hallelujah. We have authority over the enemy. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And when we recognize who the source of the problem is, and we recognize that the source of the answer is indwelling us, glory to God. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Submit myself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from me. One version says, and the devil will flee from you as in terror. See, the devil knows who you are. He's just trying to trick you into who he is. The Wizard of Oz was a type of the devil. Now, I'm not saying that they wrote it on purpose like that. I want you to, he used his machine to make himself something he wasn't. And the devil uses, and, and that machine was all about deception to make you, make all the people in Oz think he was somebody he wasn't. As a matter of fact, when he got out from behind the machine, he was a weenie. And when we get to the, see this Satan cast into the pit, this is what we'll say. This is the, this is the statement the Bible says that the church will make. Is this he who calls the nations to tremble? Look at some of the most infamous butchers of our time as far as military and stuff. You look at Hitler and you think, one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a muskrat he would lose. Okay? But he used, all the, he used all that deception and that power and the people surrounding him to protect him to, to carry out his stuff. The devil deceives so that he can carry out his strategies. But you have to recognize who he is. And then when you recognize who he is and the source of the problem is, then you can recognize who you are, that the greater one's on the inside of you. And you can stand against him by faith in the word of God and by the power of God. And not only do you overcome, you overcome victoriously and triumphantly, glory to God. You are the triumphant church. Say, I'm the triumphant church. And you come out, glory to God. Like we said the other week, you come out like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You come out like Daniel in the lion's den, glory to God. You come out like the children of Israel crossing over the, the Red Sea and the Jordan River. You come out untouched and unscathed. You come out victorious as the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, glory to God. You come out as a born-again believer, glory to God, full of faith in the Holy Ghost. And leave a wake of destroyed devils behind you, praise God. The only destruction you wreak is on the kingdom of Satan. Just like God, when the plagues came on Egypt, did not touch Israel. When we walk out our authority, Satan's kingdom is tainted, but God's is not. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we recognize who the source of the problem, who our source of victory is. Hallelujah. And I think we're going to have to get to tonight to get to the next. Stop shaking your head at me. Give you a hint. How many, is, it, is, it really, is it 10 after 12? Is that right? Okay. Now, just, just, just with me, confess. We are living on Tulsa time. It's 1110. All right, let's go. Hallelujah. Give, give you a hint. We're going to go to tonight. Once we know who the source of the problem is and who the source of the answer is, then we go to the Bible and we do this. We make sure that the promises of God cover what we're looking for. We have to go 
Don't take what Pastor Ed said. Go find it in the Bible. I can point you. I can take you to the water. But you got to drink. Let's find promises in the Word of God that cover what we're believing for and what we're dealing with. Find Bible scripture. Why? Faith does not come by what Pastor Ed says. Faith comes by hearing and hearing what the Word says. Amen? The Word of God is where our faith is developed and built from. You do not get faith. Now, let me say this. I can preach a sermon that will inspire you, that will stir you, that will point you in a direction, but be a Berean. Don't be a Thessalonican. Go study the Bible out. The Bible says that the Bereans were more noble than those of Thessalonica and that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. They went and found out from the Bible that it was in there. Why? Because until you get it for yourself, it won't do you any good. I can point you. I can inspire you. I can tell you what, you know, what it says, but you've got to get in there and get after it. Amen? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.